So in this video, I want to continue talking about Mushoku Tensei Season 2 and a bit of Season 1, I guess, in a sense, because it's all kind of wrapped up together of this thing of wish fulfillment. Because in the previous video, I talked about consequences and a full look at the overall journey of Season 2, the highs and the lows of Rudy's life and other characters as well and how it all intertwines together. But I really wanted to talk about a couple of key topics. The lacking of psychological understanding of trauma. That was something I talked about in the past video and I do think it is an issue that I've noticed with... And again, I'm just going to say it how I feel because it is my opinion and this is the point of the channel is to give my own opinion. I do think a lot of content creators that do reactions or reviews and stuff lack psychological understanding of how trauma works. And because they themselves have maybe lived a more easier going life, maybe they've had things a little bit more going in their favor, they've not understood some of the hardships that individuals go through. But even then, they could have gone through their own hardships and don't understand what other hardships mean like again we all go on our own different paths and we could all go for our own traumas and difficulties but they all are very different and it can be very hard to understand and put ourselves in the shoes of other people but I do feel like especially in the early stages of season two when it came to the ED arc there was definitely a lot of mocking a lot of lack of empathy when it came to understanding that because again as I've stated many times and I just want to touch on it again it is a real issue it is a serious real issue that men do go through and the fact that there were so many content creators mocking the very idea that this could be an actual real issue is something that kind of concerns me because it really shows a lack of empathy from a lot of content creators that really just think that they can put themselves on a high and mighty sort of throne and maybe it is because they've lived a very sheltered and privileged life which is kind of ironic because some of those individuals probably look down on other people going you've lived a sheltered and privileged life but they themselves have probably lived the most sheltered and privileged life and I myself have not gone through issues like what Rudy has but I like to try and understand characters and, and learn more about them because I find these kinds of things in insightful and very interesting. And I do think it was just very concerning looking at the journey. And it wasn't just content creators as well. It was just general anime fans as well. But just the lack of empathy when it comes to these kinds of things that go on. And also this kind of thing of like, oh, family dramas can't happen. Like Rudy and Paul's relationship and how it was very rocky because of the misunderstandings and people not understanding that hey, these kinds of things do happen. And you can understand both perspectives of, especially in season one, why Paul felt the way he did from his perspective of what he was going through and how he looked at Rudy as a golden child and thought that Rudy could accomplish anything, but realizing that Rudy is still just an individual that is a mortal human being. And as Guy said, just a child. Then you also look at a lot of the other issues as well as like wish fulfillment. I see this as kind of like the go-to thing of attacking not just the series, but also the writer as well being like, this is just a self-insert wish fulfillment, which I think is the most hilarious hypocritical component of it because it's basically them saying, I don't like how you wrote the story. You should write it like this. And it's like, at the end of the day, you aren't the writer. Sure, you can dislike the story, but to sit there and use insults like calling them an incel and all that I think is also just petty and childish and I think that's just low hanging fruit as far as it goes but the idea of it being a wish fulfillment is silly so basically that what they're trying to say is Rudy should just go through endless trauma and I mean we have series like that and you see a lot of criticisms for them as well where you have endless trauma and it becomes too predictable and a little bit too formulaic in that sense and that's something that I've seen as a criticism towards some animes where just pure trauma is thrown at it because it's no longer a wish fulfillment because no one would want to go through trauma, which is funny because I've seen that done in an anime and then people still use the idea of wish fulfillment because one thing goes right in their life. And that's the thing that's kind of interesting is that in a lot of these stories where something goes right for a character that might not be picture perfect, people get very angry at the idea that one, someone could redeem themselves or become a better person or gain forgiveness from another character in the story or gain some positive aspect in their life, build themselves up, become better and gain, 
I guess, rewards or positive reinforcement from their actions, and then instantly they go, but they did this bad mistake, they should not be allowed to be, ever be happy. And that's what's kind of interesting, not just from an anime perspective, but also watching other content creators and other anime fans really have this kind of almost knee-jerk reaction at these characters, like, how dare Rudy actually find love and have a child and have two wives because he did this bad thing and, and he shouldn't be forgiven. Like, you don't understand. I haven't forgiven him for cheating, and so he shouldn't be allowed to have a second wife, even though Sylvia is the one that is the one that should have the final say. And I definitely have my own opinions on the whole who should have been in the room when that discussion happened, and I do think the two sisters should not have been there, because again, it is between Rudy and Sylphia, and I do even question if Roxy should have been there, but Roxy maybe should have been there for part of it, and maybe then there should have been a more personal conversation between Rudy and Sylphia, because again, it is between them. Rudy is the one that's made the mistake, he's the one that's got to own it and apologize to Sylvia, and Sylvia is the one that makes the final decision. She is the wife, not the kids. The kids aren't in this, they're just his sisters. They're not the wife. They don't have a say, they're too young. And so by Norn interjecting her opinion, it's like, okay, well, well then why not have Rudy's mum there? Even though she's a bit of a potato sitting there, She's got a little bit of stuff going up there, clearly, from holding Paul's gauntlets and gloves and stuff. But why not have her there? Why not have Lilia there also? At that point, it's it's one of those where it's like, you know, why not have everyone there? It, it's just silly. I don't think they should have been there. But also seeing that fun sort of outcome of Sylphie, it's the one that accepted it, and yet certain anime fans aren't the ones that <laughs> accepted it. And... Honestly, Norn is a great character because Norn is the perspective of some of the haters of Mushoku Tensei and what they would throw at the series. And I think the writer did a very good job at creating Norn in that situation and how she responds to it because it is exactly what outsiders that do not like the series say. Well, she looks like a child, but look how small she is, but you cheated, but you're not allowed to have two wives. And, oh, I, but I haven't consented to it. And at the end of the day, Sylvie, it's like, you know, I appreciate your concern. I can appreciate you looking out for me. But you aren't the one that makes the final decision. And that's what it comes down to. And also, it's funny because Norn has a father that had two wives. So Norn was okay with Paul having two wives, but Rudy having two wives, oh, no, that that's going overboard. So it kind of shows the level of hypocrisy in her own decision, and it shows the bias that she has towards her own family members where Paul can do things, Paul can do the wrong, and that's okay because he went through hardship, but Rudy goes through hardship, well that's not allowed. And it's an interesting perspective because it kind of does show actually, if you think about it, some content creators and anime fans that will criticize Rudy for going through hardship and him getting through it and all those other things and the mistakes and all the rest. But if an, another series had a similar story, but that's not allowed. And I think a lot of the hate towards Mashuku Tensei is not towards Rudy for directly the mistakes and things that he does so much in the story. It's more about his past and what he looked like and how he behaved in that past that people kind of use. And I do think it's the one, one of the key factors is because Rudy was fat in his past life. And the reason why I believe that is because I've watched a lot of series where a protagonist has lived in a past life where they're not exactly the most attractive looking individual and they've got a fair few kilos packed on them and then they get reincarnated and suddenly they lose that weight but people latch onto that past component and that's what they latch onto. Oh, but he was a fat nobody. He was a fat nobody. And so I find that interesting of that's what people kind of latch onto. Not... The, like not the current trend that they're going towards, but that constant, oh, but that's what they were like. And I always notice that a lot of the time it's the characters that are overweight that they generally attack. And I think that's why those kinds of isekais get a lot of hate. 
and why you see a lot of other isekais that are very much more blander in their past lives where you get those like self inserts where there's like oh their past life was just a normal 30 year old 35 year old office worker that just overworked fell asleep died and was reincarnated and it's the most boring generic copy paste self insert isekai and it makes it really easy to just again self insert on it but also people don't really care about criticizing the character because there's no character defects in them but then you have a character like rudy who does have a past that does have trauma that does have character defects that has gone through a multitude of issues and has made his own mistakes in that past and then people latch onto that and go well we can't forgive him for that and I think that's a very fascinating thing to kind of observe and look at as far as a story perspective goes. And I do wonder why. I've wondered if a lot of it is because they see a bit of themselves in Rudy, in the flaws and the mistakes that they've done, and they themselves can't forgive themselves so they can't forgive a fictional character. Or if it's just because of other reasons that are far beyond what I can think of. Again, the human mind is a very complex thing, and just seeing some of the responses to Mushoku Tensei and Rudy itself has been very fascinating because it's one of those series that has had such a visceral, I think is the right word to use, response. When you look at something like Shield Hero, that was a bit of a controversial thing, but it kind of died out very quickly, mainly because the whole main first season arc of the allegations kind of worn out after that point, and it was more of yeah, she was just a royal bee doing horrible things, but the whole false accusation thing kind of weared out. And it also is just kind of funny because apparently women can't do negative aspects as well on that end, but men can. And so it's it's interesting the level of bias that we give certain things and where we give more leniency towards certain other things, whether it's those different factors that play in mind, I think is something that is is fascinating to look at. I know I'm kind of saying the word fascinating a lot, but it is really just fascinating. Because when you look at how people respond to animes like this, you can sit there and observe the behavior and wonder what is going on in their head. Why are they responding to this positively or negatively? And I think a lot of the negative responses towards Mushoku Tensei is a lack of empathy, a lack of psychological understanding, lacking literacy comprehension as well. I think that is a major component because a lot of content creators will use the web novel and claim that that is the anime. I've seen many people that attack Mushoku Tensei and say, well, this happened in the anime. And it's like, no, that happened in the web novel and that's not canon. That was a rough draft that's been changed and there have been a multitude of changes. People argue about the gravity of the changes. Some say, nah, not really much has changed. And some people say a lot of things have changed. It depends really on how you perceive it because a lot of the things that have been changed are very impactful on the discourse kind of situation. But yeah. And I think, as again, the last component to that is wish fulfillment. I do not see Mushoku Tensei as a wish fulfillment. I see it as a journey about growth, development, and change and self redemption. Not so much redemption that others can see because at the end of the day, Rudy has no one to prove to. There is no one there to judge him based on his past actions except himself. He is the only one that is judging himself, and he does judge himself. He is very harsh on himself because of his past mistakes. And that is why when he sees the man god, every time, he is in the appearance of his overweight past look. Because that's how he sees himself, is that fat, overweight, ugly human being. That's his perception. That's how he sees himself which is also how a lot of the haters see him. So it's very interesting that Mishuku Tensei really does dabble in on a lot of the psychological components that we as individuals do ourselves onto others. I love the series for that, and I look forward to seeing Season 3, because Season 3 is really going to heat things up. I was dabbling, um, looking at the light novels again, just seeing what the stories are, because I've read them, I've reviewed them, they're on the channel, so if you want to check them out, but I forget, like, exactly which volumes do which things in the story, and the first three volumes, which will be the first core for Season 3, is going to be, mwah, it is going to be chaotic. It is going to be pure, pure, pure chaos in its most pure sense. There is going to be absolute controversy on a whole new level. 
And I would like to do a video going over why Season 3 is going to be absolute chaos and what they will probably cover because I do think they will try and do something different in this season. I've just been kind of contextualizing and thinking over what I think will be done for Season 3 because I do think they will do things a little bit different. And so I would like to make a video on that. If you are interested on that video, definitely say in the comment section down below. If you have any things that you want me to cover as far as analysis goes on this anime or other animes, definitely leave it down in the comment section down below. And things that you may want me to cover in Mushoku Tensei in that video, definitely leave in the comment sections down below. And I will try and get to that. But again, love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. But if you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.